Today we want Jesus himself to come and teach us and train us how to be his disciples. May the Spirit of the Lord, God Almighty, who is in us, the grace and hope of Jesus Christ that is in us, may we rise in people of faith to become the disciples that are triggered today to leave this place with the revelation we get today to go out and be a witness of Christ. And so today I want to speak on that faith must be intentional. It must be. You know, Jesus spent many years and most of the teaching, a lot of times, faith, 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 faith. He not only taught them, but he trained them in faith. So faith is actually a workout. Faith is something you are trained in, not just something you read and hear, but faith is comes by hearing and hearing and hearing because it's training. And so faith is the muscle that produces miracles. I heard that and I'm saying, God, where is that coming from? Faith is the muscle. And then I begin to realize that Jesus had great concern for Peter. But it wasn't about his family. It wasn't about his health. It wasn't about his ministry. It wasn't about his money. It was about his faith. And so in Luke 22, verses 31 and 32, Jesus speaking to Peter says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. It means our faith can be great one day and fail another day. So how do you keep your faith alive? How do you keep your faith active? And so Jesus prayed that your faith will not fail. And then Jesus was confident. He made a declaration. And when you have turned back, because Peter was going to waver, but Jesus declared, you will not die without faith. Oh, people hear this. Hear the working of faith. Hear Jesus, the man of faith, the author, the finisher of faith faith, the creator of faith. He said to Peter, but however, when you have turned back, because I have prayed, you will strengthen your brothers. And that's why Peter was able to, to write in first Peter and, and second Peter about Satan being like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not talking about what he read. He's talking about what he experienced. Satan saw Peter at a very vulnerable moment and tried to shipwreck his faith, almost succeeded, but Jesus had already prayed. Wow. So when I, when I heard that faith is a muscle, I had to look up this thing. I'm saying, well, well, let me understand again about muscle. And so a muscle in your body is created with tissue, certain kind of tissue that is different from the tissue in the liver, for example, to function and produce force and motion. I'm telling you, the human body is, is the biggest creation. It is so powerful, tactical, the great God Almighty, everything about us is intentional. Even the kind of tissue that is in your muscle is different from the kind of tissue that is in your eye. Oh, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. One day David says, wow, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So the muscles is created to produce force and motion. When your muscles failed, it's called paralysis. And so faith also function to produce force and motion to your prayer and declarations. And that's why if you're not careful, you could catch yourself parroting prayers. And it's not connected to faith at all. 
I used to memorize prayers. I was taught to memorize prayers that I could just say them out of my missile and just memorize and just say, say, say. What are you saying? Oh, I don't know what I'm saying, but I have memorized it and I'm just saying. In other words, it was not connected at all to faith. And so faith functions to produce force and motion to your prayer and declaration. If you just parrot prayers and parrot declarations, then that's why we have to say, God, is that why we have not yet received some of our miracles? Is, that, is there a hold up to our miracles? Because you taught on faith over and over and over and over again, and we get into tradition. That's why Jesus says one of the greatest things that worked against him was tradition. We have always done it this way. We have always parroted this way. We have always done this. And you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm saying, I have come. I am the anointed one that you have been praying for. And I am here now. And you're not even willing to have faith in me. You're not even willing to activate your faith to believe what I'm saying. Because you're parroting what you have been parroting for the last 50 years. And so faith then is like wisdom. It involves thinking, thoughts, mind, heart, knowledge, and it leads to wise action. In Philippians 2.5, Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What is he saying? Begin to think like God. Begin to figure out what Jesus is trying to say when he's telling them certain things. I know it was overwhelming for them because he's telling them some powerful things, you know, because faith is such a powerful uh, uh, muscle, such a powerful thing, such a powerful force. It, it is so powerful that it can create the impossible to become possible. So I want you people... What you're hearing today, don't begin to think that you know it all. You could be 40 years as a Christian and is missing a gap in your life. I have been many years as a Christian and God is showing me new things. Why? Because I want to work more miracle signs and wonders. I want to be a witness of Jesus Christ. I just don't want to have head knowledge. I want to shine, I want to share it, and I want to show it. That's what triggered with the disciples and they came out of the upper room and they were ignited by faith and they kept their faith alive and thousands were added to the church because they weren't just parroting things, they were working their faith. Let this mind be in you. If we don't begin to think like Christ, we won't manifest his glory. So faith is like a wisdom. It involves your thinking, your thoughts, your mind, your heart, and your knowledge. Because wisdom is, is knowledge in action with the right reactions. And so the battle is in the mind. The situation, the issues come, it rise up, and, and we begin to fight. Faith is the wisdom of God. It is tactical, it's intentional, with a desired outcome. Faith must be intentional and it must be tactical. Faith triggers action and reaction to your prayer. By faith you believe and receive answers to your prayer. You know, just thinking about how the, the, the powerful effect and how much the mind is involved in faith. You know, if they never think it through, but now God is saying, now, I taught a lot, but the disciples kept getting it. And because you have to really understand the mind of Christ and think like Christ. A professor of internal medicine said, if we can train our brain to respond to muscle signals in a certain way, we can actually push harder and for longer. So in other words, when you're exercising, and you think, your brain begins to tell you, okay, that's enough. And, and you begin to think, oh, I'm getting tired. I can't go any further. In other words, you now have to train your brain. And this is how marathon runners do. They train the brain to move beyond the fatigue and find another level of strength. 
The exercise is both mental and spiritual. Prayer is mental and spiritual. You know, overcoming is mental and spiritual. And so faith is like a muscle. You use it or you lose it. It fails. If you exercise it and work it, it grows strong. And so it is said that exercise stimulates the growth of new brain cells. Every now and again, they're coming out with new things. And they used to tell us you can't have growth in brain cells and all kind of stuff, you know, with people trying to think they understand the human body when it's beyond. We are growing more and more knowledge. But now they're saying that exercise stimulates the growth of new brain cells and help prevent age-related decline. That's what they're saying now. It causes higher self-esteem and regular activities and investment in your mind, your body, and your soul. When you stop having regular activity, you begin to deteriorate. And that's why you have to push yourself to exercise, push yourself to walk, Push yourself to do something. Push yourself to not just lie down in bed all day. Push yourself not to just sit all day, even as I talk to myself and work, 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 work. Yes, I'm working my hands, but it's not just my finger I want to work, not just my brain, but I need to keep my body fit. Because when you do not exercise, you are slowing down the brain cells the growth of the brain cells, and you are aging yourself because of lack of exercise. And so this is important. Therefore, regular faith exercise and activity is an investment in your mind, in your body, in your soul, and even in your destiny. Luke 22, 32, Jesus said to Simon, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Because Peter was going to be a major key player in launching the church of Jesus Christ, launching Christianity, keeping God alive, the fight against shutting down people from believing in Jesus was raging, trying to shut down Christianity, trying to stop people from boasting in Jesus. Peter was a part of the ones that would birth the church. And here it is, his faith is going to fail because faith is key if you don't exercise it and if you don't have regular activity in faith. Whether work or not, work it, work it, work it until one day like Peter, you said, wow, to a crippled man, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. And the crippled man rose up and walked. People of God, it is regular exercising the faith that will cause it to grow. It is regular exercising of your body that causes it to stay strong. That is the reality. You stop, you can stop doing exercise and you will begin to decline. If you stop exercising your faith, you will begin to decline in seeing the results in your prayer. People of God, faith is the muscles that create force and motion to your prayers. Faith is a great gift from God. And that's why Jesus emphasized it so much. You know what? Most of the time he rebuked them. You know what he was rebuking them for? Oh, you of little faith. What is wrong with you? I mean, how long must I be with you and teach you about faith over and over again? And the first time you get into a crisis, you begin to say, I'm going to drown. This can't happen. What is wrong with you? You must get this. And it's like Jesus is saying, if you get everything, remember, get this, understand faith. Faith is power. Faith is strength. Faith is, faith is grace. Faith is wisdom. People of God, faith can make you strong. The lack of faith makes you weak. Faith can make you prosper. The lack of faith can keep you poor. Faith can make you famous. The lack of faith put you under a bed to hide. Faith can keep you alive. The lack of faith can make you die. 
And people of God, I'm going to share with you a story and take you through faith exercise today. Come on, let get ready. We're going to do some faith exercises. We're going to work faith today, people of God, because we're not going to sit down and let lack of faith kill us off in this COVID this season. Christ is greater than COVID. Come on, people. We have to rise up and push your body and you have to rise up and push your faith else you can die. That's how serious this is. And we're going to see how we're going to show you an example of, 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 of this. Faith can make you shine. Doubt makes you dull. Faith can make you finish. Doubt makes you give up. Faith makes all things possible. Doubt makes nothing possible possible. This is serious people. I want you to keep with me in this journey and let's create a faith revolution because fear is in is the revolution in this season. People are afraid. People are depressed. Let's create the counter the counter revolution. Faith. Faith in God. Matthew 17 verses 19 and 20. The disciples came to Jesus because they couldn't drive out a demon from a little boy. And they asked privately, uh, why couldn't we drive it out, Lord? And he replied, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. Peter, listen up good. Listen to me. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Hear me, disciples, nothing will be impossible for you. Oh, people of God, just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand and just say, God, let that sink into my soul. Let that sink into my brain. Let me understand, God, what you're trying to say behind what you're saying. Something is saying something. Something is saying something. Help me to get it. The disciples got it. They were like me. They, they, they were impulsive at times. They did wrong things at times. They frustrated Jesus at times. But God, they got it. They launch Christianity. They launch your church. They were miracle workers. They change nations. God, let it happen again. Let it happen again. People of God, I want you now to ask God for your nation. Psalm chapter 2 says, ask of me for the nations and I will give it to you. Do you believe that or just, just a parrot? Oh yeah, I don't. You don't even know what that means. What it means? It means if you ask for your nation, he will give you power. He will give you ability. He will give you influence. He will give the right people around you and he will make you become a blesser to your nation. That's what God said. And he never said only some. He said it. Whosoever will believe can receive. Powerful things that Jesus has promised. And we want to walk in this faith, people of God. Jesus taught the disciples how to work their faith muscle. Faith is the muscles that produces miracles. It produces force to make the enemy back off. It produces motion so you can go forward in your destiny. A muscle function to give force and motion. People of God, I have muscles in my arms here and that muscles is what enable me to do this. I would not be able to put my arm up and down if my muscle was paralyzed. I'm not going anywhere if my muscle is paralyzed. But because my muscle is getting stronger even as I'm doing this, and then the, the trainer will tell you 12 reps, and your brain is telling you, I can only do three. And you have to now begin to speak to your brain. I'm going to finish the 12. And if you keep saying it, your brain will be retrained, and you find you will move from 12 to 20 to 30 to 40. The sit-ups, 100. It is possible. Because you're retraining your brain as well as your body. Oh, people of God, come on, just say hallelujah. I want you to write in the chat, help me, Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's what you just have to put. Help me, Jesus. 
because this is understanding why some people can run and some people can't. Why some people are fit and some people are not. Well, if you don't use it, you lose it. Your, your exercise is investment in your body. Faith is investment in your spirit and relationship. Your mind, your soul, and your body benefits from exercise. Your mind, your soul, your body, and your spirit benefit from exercising your faith. This is very critical because people need you. People need God. And they're not seeing God, but they see you. And this is why Jesus says, be a witness. You will receive power when they see you, Peter. They will see Christ. And it happened. P Peter healed somebody and they said, oh, he's a God. He's a God. Peter says, no. <laughs> Hello, I'm not a God. If you knew me, you wouldn't say that. No, Christ in me. It's in the name of Jesus you were healed. Oh, people of God, if God can change and turn around people, Peter, we have hope here. Praise God. Let's do it. And let's do it together. You know, faith triggers action and reaction. Your prayer, it triggers. It, faith causes a triggering even of angels to begin to ascend and descend. It creates action in the spirit world. And then it manifests in the natural world. At one time, Jesus was so frustrated with the disciples because they have to get the whole thing about faith. So Mark 9, verse 19, he says, Oh, unbelieving generation, how long should I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? Bring the boy to me, really. You know, I mean, you should be able to heal the boy by now. I've sent you out, I've trained you, bring him to me. It's lack of faith is the reason. Wow. So today we want to talk again and train you in how to work your faith. How to create a faith circle to work your faith. A process of knowing, thinking, believing, declaring, and receiving working your faith. This is why God gave us this faith circle. So we understand how to work the faith and start from the need to receive the miracle. There are five steps to working your faith. Five steps. Number one, have faith in God. All things are possible. <laughs> That's just number one. Number two, have faith in God's word. And I'm going to show you the scriptures, how Jesus taught them and what he said. And let's all become disciples of Christ again. Let him train us, people of God. Let him you know, talk to us and, and help us to get this thing. You know, faith in God's word. Number three, ask God in prayer. After you put your faith in God, after you put your faith in his word, you're working out, you're working out. And you see, this is what a trainer will tell you to do. Make sure if you want to lift the weight, you have to be intentional about what you use to lift. Because if you lift something the wrong way, you could hurt your back. You need to bend your knees. They will tell you how to work this thing. You see somebody lifting up a hundred pounds. You just decide, oh, I'm going to lift up a hundred pounds. Well, you better understand how to protect yourself in that whole thing. And now God is showing us how to work our faith. Number four, faith declaration. Number five, by faith, believe and receive. I was so excited this morning that I had to call you know, one of, one of my sons and daughters here that have been through this situation where if it wasn't for the faith of his wife, the man would have died. This is serious, people of God. Faith is a thing that can release your miracles. Faith will make you strong, lack thereof. And faith is serious. And so we, one of our pastors, you know, had gallbladder issues. And he went to the hospital and he get a laparoscopy surgery, very minimal surgery, one and a half hours. He was out of the hospital, went home, started to bleed. 
And then they realized that the blood was coming from the inside out. And so, you know, the wife was telling me this morning, I called one of our medical support team because we have a medical support team in our, in our church. And she said, go to the hospital now and tell them you're not leaving until the bleeding stops. Sometimes you have to get training how to speak to doctors. You have to get training how to even go to emergency. And so she trained her what to say and how to say it and telling them, declare, I'm not leaving here until the bleeding stop in my husband. And so they, they realize this is serious because sometimes it takes them a while. Doctors are human beings. They're not gods. So they don't even know everything all the time. And so went to surgery for more than 10 hours. They couldn't stop the bleeding. I found out later it's because they had accidentally cut something and they couldn't find which artery or vein, what is it, where the blood is coming from, 10 hours. And then she said to me, after 10 hours, the doctor came out and said, I'm leaving, I'm tired. You know what she said? My faith is in God. Go ahead, doctor. He says, another doctor is taking over now. My faith is in God. You did your job. The other doctor can do his job, but my faith is in God. People of God, the first <laughs> step into working your faith is who you put your faith in. Faith is not in the doctor first. Faith is in God. I'll tell you something. This woman is a perfect example of what happened. Her husband was lying there. He never knew what was happening, but it, it, there it is. She decided that I am going to do it. And then what happened is that she was always calling the office and updating us. You know, he's there. He's in the hospital. He's come back. Yes, he started to bleed out, etc., etc. And then I came to the hospital because I was visiting someone. Two of us came. I always travel in the twos. And there it was that, you know, we found out that the doctors told her that he's going to die. And so we have to talk about the faith cluster. But people of God, this woman, when the doctor told her about your husband, we're going to take him out of ICU and we're just going to put him in a room. And she says, my husband will not die. He will live. And I tell you, people of God, it was ICU. And only I was allowed to go into that room and his wife was there. I draw the curtains around him and we're going to talk about a faith cluster that brought him back to life. He was in a coma. He didn't know what was happening. I bent down beside him and I said, Pastor, call his name. Pastor Pat is here. That was my first thing. Pastor Pat is here. We are taking control of the situation. Are you hearing me? And after a while, it's like he was coming out of the fog and the coma. I said, are you hearing me? If you're hearing me, smile. And he smiled. And I begin to whisper into his ear a process. And the, that was about 10 years ago, people of God. The man lived because of faith. Uh, people, this, this is serious, people. This is serious. We need to understand the process here of what's happening. What's happening? I spoke into his spirit and I say, say amen. After a while, he was smiling with me. Keep smiling. I say, keep looking to look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. And I'm looking in his eyes and speaking to him in his spirit. Spirit, soul, body. Inside, out. Save his spirit so that he doesn't give up. Then move to his mind, his will, his emotions. And then I said, if you agree, say amen. And he said, amen. Do you know pastor says he doesn't even remember all of that? His wife and I, in agreement by his bed, brought him back, people of God, because she declared, my husband will not die. He will live. I tell you, people, let's get this thing. Let's get this thing because this is something you might need one day. 
And Jesus taught the disciple word for word how to work the faith muscle. That's why God tell me create to create the faith circle. It's like a circle where you go around and you get right back to God. It's not like a straight line where you go and never come back to God, but it's a faith circle because you start with God and you end with God. Oh my word, God is so good. Because I say, God, I want more miracles, signs and wonders in my life. So the faith circle, number one, have faith in God. And you can see this in my Facebook. You can see it in the website, patfrancis.org. You can see it on the website, kingdomcovenant.ca. And begin to see all of this. And I want to send you the training, more training, how to understand more about clusters and how to work the faith workout people of God. Working your faith for miracles. Number one, have faith in God. The doctor said to this wife, oh, your husband, we're just going to take him out of IC and put him in a room. Oh my, she knew what that mean. It means it's over. We're not going to try anymore. He would have bleed out and die. The woman says, don't put him in that room. Put him back in ICU. She had to work her faith. My husband will live and not die. She said she had to even put herself even and shut out family members because they were saying one thing and she just shut them out because she was working her faith and she would not allow anything or anyone to distract her. She is on the treadmill. She is working out her faith. What does Jesus say? Matthew eleven twenty two. have faith in God. God, that's the first base. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't care what doctors say. I don't care what, 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 what kings say. I don't care what whatever say. Have faith in God. That's first base. That's what Jesus. I'm just going to tell you what Jesus trained the disciples in. Why they move from doubting to even making cripple walk. This is what we're learning today, people of God. We want to be ministers and witnesses of Christ. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them when they're trying to question him. He says, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The doctor says, we can't do anything. The wife just says, you do what you can do, doctor. But my faith is in God. Oh, that's the first base. Have faith in in God. Understand people, God Almighty I'm talking about, have faith in Christ. And once you put your faith in Christ, all things are literally possible, whatever. And then number two, have faith in God's word. In other words, connect your need with God's promises in the Bible. That means your desire is credible because it lines up with the word. Jesus said in John 10, 35, the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, the word of God is true and trustworthy. Jeremiah 1, verse 12, the Lord said to Jeremiah, you have seen well, I am ready to perform my word. Because he's telling Jeremiah he's going to do this and do this. And Jeremiah says, I can't. I am just a child. I'm just, I'm just. Jeremiah, you have seen well. I know you're just a child. <laughs> but tell me anyway. I am ready to perform my word. You're going to speak to nations. You're going to, you're going to be so influential. They're going to blow you away. You might be young, but I am God. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. The word of God carries faith. The word of God releases faith. 2 Corinthians 1, 20 says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. People of God, no matter how many promises in the Bible, a thousand or more, whatever, 
They are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. In other words, when you pray the Bible and pray the word, Christ is saying amen. You are saying amen to the glory of God and it becomes the great amen. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you ready for a miracle today? Because we're working it today. We're working it. Through him, the amen is spoken by us. In other words, through in Christ, once you say in Jesus' name, amen. That's heaven. And now, amen. That's earth. To the glory of God. Because God is now in your miracle because you prayed according to the word. Number three, ask God in prayer. This prayer is the faith connection with God in humility, confidence, and assurance. In other words, this wife says to the doctor, that's okay, doctor. My faith is in God. My faith, and I am praying. That's what she said to the doctor, and he looked up to the heavens. This woman is something else. I am praying, meaning I'm keeping my faith alive. You have my husband resuscitating. I am resuscitating with the power of God. I am keeping him alive. I am praying. And do you know what Jesus, Jesus now said, Matthew 21, 22, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Woo, wow. Why? Because you put your faith in God, because you put your faith in this word, that means it's will. Whatever you ask in prayer now can be yours. And we're going to go to the, the, the fourth, ish, uh, fourth way we're going to work in our faith. This is a workout, people of God. This is a workout. You know, when you're doing your workout, sometimes they tell you that you have to do your stretches first and you have to do all of this first just to have all the pieces and then you keep the heart rate at a certain thing. This is your workout, faith workout, people of God. Have faith in God. Have faith in his word. Ask God in prayer whatever, because it will be according to his will, because the word confirms it. Number four, make faith declarations. What you say and decree by faith will become your reality. Notice Jesus to Peter, I have prayed for you and you will be returning back. You go off faith, but you're going to come back and you're going to strengthen others. I mean, Jesus knew that Peter was going to write books in the Bible. He was going to launch Christianity, help establish the church of Jesus Christ. So I am not going to allow Satan to keep him outside of faith. Wow. He declared it and it happened. Declarations. Mark eleven twenty three. This is Jesus saying now, I tell you the truth. If anyone says... Declaration now is your speaking. Hello? If anyone says to this mountain, and he point to the mountain, and say, go throw yourself into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you says will happen, it will be done for him. Whoa, whoa, whoa here. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Jesus says things that is so overwhelming. But he says, I tell you the truth. I'm saying that you can reach a level of faith that whatever blockage is in your life, you can say in the name of Jesus, wall divide and it divides. Can you imagine? This is what Jesus is saying. All things are possible because you put your faith in me and I see faith in you. All things are possible. And number five, by faith, believe and receive. By faith, create a receiving blanket for your miracle. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is substance of things you hope for. This is why the enemy is trying to crush everybody's hope at this time. Uh-huh. But in the name of Jesus, we are going to have hope to birth faith. And by faith, we will be kept alive. And by faith, we will receive miracles in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. 
So in other words, you declare, after you make your declaration, then you say, God, I receive my miracle in Jesus' name. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you will be back and you will strengthen others. The woman at the well says, I will touch his hem and I will be healed. The man Jairus said to Jesus, come, put your, daughter, put your hands on my daughter who is sick and dying and she will be healed and she will not die. Everything they declare, they got it in the name of Jesus. So by faith, believe. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Jesus says, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it now and it will be yours. Oh, people, are you ready for the faith workout? Did you write down the five principles? And you can go on my website, patfrancis.org, or the church website, kingdomcovenant.ca, or my Facebook of Pat Francis Ministries, and I have it there for you. And people of God, we're going to talk more and more about faith because I tell you, one billion people say they believe in Christ. There are more than a billion that are believing in Christ. Can you imagine if we have two billion people that are Christians and two billion people believe in Christ and two billion people believe that Jesus is the miracle worker? People of God, miracles are going to happen. Call on the name of Jesus, whatever religion you are. Whatever state you are, say, Jesus Christ, I believe in you. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I put my faith in your word that say, if I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, you will grant what I ask. And I'm coming to you in prayer. And I pray in Jesus' name. And then I make my declarations by faith because I believe for a miracle from Jesus today. And I receive my miracle because God is alive. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. People of God, I want you to practice this. I want you to right now think of something that you are praying for. Think of something that you have a need for. And let's just do the five step. Let's do a faith workout right now. Are you praying? If you can, write your need down right there in the chat. Or if you just say, I have a need, it's private, that's fine. But you know what you're writing down and we're going to believe in the name of Jesus. Are you ready now? Put your hands up and begin to say, I put my faith in God. Jesus, I believe in you. Come on, people. I put my faith in God. I believe in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then number two, I put my faith in God's word. Hallelujah. If it's sickness, what does the word say? By his stripes, I am healed. If it's about the family, if you believe and you're saved, your entire household will be saved. Whatever it is, Whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe and receive it, it's yours. So people of God, allow God to, to begin to do miracles. My God, heaven must be bored with us, <laughs> you know, because we're not exercising our faith so that we can see God work the way the disciples, come on, we want to be disciples who, who are innocent to enough to believe what Jesus said is and begin to work it, begin to exercise it, begin to find somebody to pray for, begin to get your own miracle in Jesus name and then number four make your declaration I was sick but now I am healed in Jesus name oh the door that was closed is now open in Jesus name whatever you're praying for he says I will open a door for you that no man can shut oh my god Whatever attacks is against your life, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in slander or even behind your back, don't worry about it. It's condemned in Jesus' name. Oh, people of God, begin to read the word. If, this is, if you're a new Christian today, come into the Lord, begin to read the book of John. Find a Bible, go online. 
and, and download a Bible and just receive the book of John. Bibles are all over in the Bible now, in, in, uh, on, the, on the search engine. So you can find it. Read the book of John and whatever Jesus tells you, he will back his word in the name of Jesus. And then number five, believe and receive. Oh, just lift up your hand. I believe and receive for my miracle today in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're praying for somebody else because now you can take this and begin to find somebody now to pray for. Find somebody to pray and bless. And I want you to send to me, people of God, about your miracle. One person wrote to me and said, and called the office and said, tell Pastor Pat, I was out of a job. I was depressed. Nothing could happen. And she called the office and we prayed, but not only prayed, but we did some practical thing. She says, now I have my job and I have my car. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. This is so exciting. People of God, somebody came from India living in, in, in Canada and things were happening and all of a sudden faith, her faith connected with my faith and the faith of our prayer warriors that are praying every single day. And now the woman with no money, no job, everything she try and depression, family under attack. And she says, now I have my job and I have a car. Wow. People of God, with God, all things are possible. Jesus, Jesus said this now, not Pat Francis. If you believe all things are possible to you, if you believe, that's Jesus. Let that be your reality right now. And the first thing you have to do, have faith in God. What does that mean? Make sure now God is in your situation. Invite him in your heart. Because if he comes in your heart, he then has the right to heal your body. He has the right to touch your family. He has the right to heal the circumstances in your life because you have invited him in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want you now to pray with me and receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And I want you to put into the chat today that I receive Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And if you and I, if you want us to mentor you, we want to help you to grow in faith. Put your name and your email. That's all I'm asking you. If you want me to send you daily inspiration, if you want me to help you, we are willing to help you. So put your name and your email there, or if not, email me at kail at patfrancis.org and we will begin to increase what we are sharing, tell you more, send you more, and then you can become a faith champion. All of these people who experience Jesus, you can't keep it to yourself. You got to find somebody to tell. You got to find somebody to pray for. You got to pray it forward, pray it forward, pray it forward, and become a faith circle champion. And so all that is there for you in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray now and receive Jesus into your heart. Say, dear Jesus, I believe in you. I put my faith in you. I believe in your word that whatever I ask for in prayer, you will do it in Jesus' name. Forgive me of all my sins and weakness. Save me, Jesus. Save me and help me to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. And people of God, amen is not a parrot word. Amen means so be it. Amen means so it is now. I am saved now. Hallelujah. Make sure you come on, put it in that chat right now. I am saved now in Jesus name.